Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and in this video I want to show you the new live PA rig that I set up for my acoustic trio and I want to take you through all the gear, talk a little bit about why I picked the uh, pieces of gear that I picked and kind of give you my overall thought process of when I was put, as I was putting this together. If you want to check out any of the gear that's in this video, the links will be in the description box below. Go check it out. Um, and if you have any questions, you can leave comments below. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, hit that subscribe button. Also go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and get your five free mixing training courses. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you wanna learn the craft of mixing in a very non-technical way, check out what I have going on over at mixingmadeeasy.net. So here we are sitting on the floor next to the rig. So the thought process behind this new rig for this acoustic trio that I joined was really a couple of things I wanted to achieve. First, it had to be as small and as compact as possible because a lot of places that were playing like coffee shops and some smaller rooms and some smaller venues, I wanted something that we could tuck into the corner really easy, it's out of the way, it's compact, it's mobile, uh, on wheels, um, and also that it was very light. It was easy to get in and out of the car for one person where I can have to, if I have to bring it up a flight of stairs, it's not gonna break my back and I wanna be able to set it up, break it down, in less than 10 minutes and I think I achieved that. So here is the rack here. Now everything was built around the mixer on top here. The Studio Live uh, Series 3 mixer by PreSonus this is the 16 channel version. Great live mixer. I'll do a more in-depth video and show you uh, how I have this, the mixer set up uh, with all the internals on the scenes and the different effects and stuff in another video. But this has 16 channels of input, which we're only using about nine channels of input, but it's a great mixer. Uh, I love it. It's got all the fat channel plugins from PreSonus, all the SSLs and the LA-2As and the 1176s that we can uh, play right through, uh, which is great to help shape the sound. It also has the SD recorder right on board so I can record directly directly to an SD card and multi-track and then bring it back into the studio and mix it at a later time, which is really, really cool. Everything is going through this. Now it's sitting on top of my road cases as opposed to rack mounted inside of one of the road cases because all the road cases that I found to rack mount a mixer like this, it was part of a much bigger case. And as I said a second ago, I wanted to keep this thing as light as possible. I didn't want this thing to weigh 100 pounds. I wanted each uh, piece to weigh less than 40 pounds completely loaded up. So for now, I'm just gonna transport this in a regular uh, Pelican style case, take it out, lay it, sit it on top of the, on the, on the top road case when we get to the venue, not a big deal. Maybe at one point I'll, I'll look around a little more and see if they have any uh, what cases that I can rack mount it where it's not gonna be this big behemoth that's really, really heavy. Underneath that we have two road cases, two separate cases. They're both six spaces each in order to keep the weight down. In the top uh, road case, I have a power strip here um, with eight outlets on the back and it's a surge protector. And if you guys can't see this, uh, I'll take some B-roll and put it up on the screen here and post. Uh, underneath that is where we have our wireless in-ear system. So all three of us are going to be using wireless in-ears so we don't have any stage monitors on the floor. Uh, it was really important to me as well as that we have as few cables and as few monitors for setup and things that are on the floor. I wanted to keep the floor and the stage area nice and clean. So we are running in-ears and here is the Shure PSM300 wireless in-ear system. I have another one on the way that will be rack mounted here as well. Um, these things are fantastic. I have custom in-ears uh, in by uh, 64 Audio, which is great. And that's what we're using for our in-ears. Um, underneath that, we have our vocal uh, wireless system. This is uh, the dual uh, Sennheiser with the uh, A30, E835 handheld uh, wireless vocal mics. Again, don't want any XLR cables all over the stage or a stage snake. Wireless, uh, this is really, really great. Uh, really uh, good for uh, feedback doesn't feed back at all. You could crank up the PA in the room and it just doesn't feed back. It sounds really great. I really like the Sennheiser stuff and it's really well priced too. It's about, I think about 600 bucks for the two for the two systems, which is great. Um, this is not a rack mounted unit. It's a tabletop unit. So I have it dual locked down to a rack shelf, a metal rack shelf. And I just kind of Velcroed it down. Nice and sturdy. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere. The last piece inside of the top road case is a PreSonus interface. This is the 1810C. It's a USB-C interface. 
Um, this is not being used for the inputs. We have four um, XLR inputs on the front. This is really being used for the outputs because we're also running and playing along with backing tracks on the MacBook Pro, which we'll talk about in a minute. So we're using um, the, uh, the 1810C to assign the click track, the Q track, and the music tracks um, directly out of the computer out the direct outputs into the studio live so I can have my click track my cue track and then my stereo uh, left right um, backing tracks all on separate faders on the studio live which is great and because the studio live has six sets of auxiliary outputs each of us have a stereo pair for our in-ears so we could put whatever we want in our personal in-ear mixes which is really great and everything is separate on the board here with faders so that's what the PreSonus interface is for as I said we're not even using it for the inputs, we're just using it for the direct outputs. Once again, this is dual locked, kind of a Velcro down to a rack shelf because it's not a rack mounted unit. And that's the top rack, has covers on the front and back. The cabling is all labeled on the back. So I just pull it out of the studio live, tuck it in the back of the case, put the covers on. Then I just take the covers off in the venue and plug them right into the studio live and everything is uh, labeled accordingly. So it's a very fast setup. This case weighs about 32 pounds or so when it's uh, when it has the covers on and it's ready to go. So it's you know underneath my 40 pound limit. In the bottom case, the same uh, duplicate as the top. Uh, this case holds some storage, uh, a storage uh, sh uh, drawer for all our cables and accessories and wireless battery packs down here, and, it, and, it, and it's lockable as well. Um, and we have some stuff, some spare stuff for our for our backup hard drive and just some accessories and stuff that we need. All sits in this drawer and it locks. So this is great. Um, and then above that, I have my acoustic guitar effect. So one other thing I didn't want to do is I didn't want to have pedals on the floor. I wanted the stage to be nice and clean. Typically for my acoustic guitar playing, the pedals are kind of set it and forget it. It's not something I have to get to mid-performance. So I bought one of these uh, sliding shelves that have Velcro on the top, and I just Velcro down my effects, and I'm using a, um, a Line 6 G10 wireless for my acoustic guitar, so there's no cables, and, my, and all my effects just sit right on this shelf, which is really, really easy and handy. Um, I'm using um, LR Bags effects. I'm using an LR Bags reverb, an LR Bags um, EQ pedal, as well as an LR uh, Bags Session DI pedal. If you're someone who plays acoustic guitar and you plug directly into a mixer or directly into a PA, it doesn't always sound very good, typically because the pickup sounds kind of metallic y, kind of quacky. It never really has that nice mic'd up sound. This LR Bags uh, Session DI pedal gets you really, really close to that mic'd up sound without having to mic up guitar in a live venue, which is fantastic. It's got some parallel uh, EQ and compression on it, has some saturation uh, controls on it to really glue the acoustic guitar tone together. And then I'm using a reverb and an EQ pedal as well. I'm not using the EQ and the reverb on the Studio Live for my acoustic guitar. I just really like the LR Bags and the way they sound. These Align Series pedals by LR Bags is really designed for acoustic guitar in a live performance. So um, it's really just easily just to dial it in as opposed to having to do it on the mixer, although I guess I could do it on the mixer as well. But the Session DI for the acoustic guitar is fantastic. You may want to check out that pedal if you're an acoustic guitar player. Links will be in the description box below. Um, all of that is being powered by an MXR power brick. So everything is just ni nice and neat and easy. This just slides in, it locks in place so it doesn't shift around during transport. And, and you know, depending on the venue, I may need to, to tweak the EQ a tiny bit, but other than that, it just kind of set it and forget it. So it keeps me from having pedals on the floor. So that is the entire PA rig. Again, uh, it's all very portable, very easy to move around. It is all sitting on um, a moving dolly. I'll put the image up on the screen. It has four wheels on it. I bought it on Amazon for like 50 or 60 bucks. Uh, the road cases just drop on top and I can just wheel it around the club. So again, it's real simple to move this whole thing around. So that is the entire PA. All of that is going to our MacBook Pro. I have a 2017 MacBook Pro, and we're running backing tracks, as I said. And for backing tracks, I'm using Ableton Live, um, as opposed to Studio One to run backing tracks. Ableton is really designed to be used in a live performance situation. And I might do a video on that as well to show you how I'm kind of using it. I'm still getting used to it. But for playing tracks and playing to tracks live, we're playing to a lot of drum and percussion tracks. Ableton Live is the way to go. And it's just one USB cable right to the uh, audio interface. I have a, um, a three button 
um, USB uh, MIDI controller switch that I can switch between the songs so the computer doesn't even need to be next to me on stage. I can use my feet and just tap through um, the different songs from one track to another. You can also set up Ableton to kind of automate it so it'll play automatically if you'd like. And again, I'll do another video on that. Um, and that's real easy. The computer just folds up, goes into the drawer. Um, and it's a real portable rig. It's really, really nice. So um, that is my acoustic rig. Oh, and, and the PA speaker is, um, I'm using, um, and I'll do some B-roll for you here as well. I'm using the Electro Voice EV uh, Evolve 50, which is the, um, the subwoofer with the column array. Very similar to the Bose of the JBL. Fantastic, 1,000 watts. One speaker is all you really need. One setup, it can play a room of 250 people. It's got plenty of power, crystal clear. We run everything through it. It just sounds amazing. Again, you want to check that out. The links will be in the description box below. Let me know what you think of this uh, particular setup. If you have any ideas or any questions about it, you can leave comments below. Again, all the gear will be listed with all the links. You can go check them out at sweetwater.com. Again, thank you for joining me uh, and checking out my new PA rig. I really appreciate your time. Again, go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Get your five free mixing training courses. Check me out at mixingmadeeasy.net. And until the next video, I've been Dave with HomeReportingMadeEasy.com, and I will see you all very soon. Take care.